Hello and welcome to section 7.2 on module 7. Okay, so now you have a basic understanding of uh, how DHCP version 4 works and how it can make your job a bit easier. Now we're going to move on to part 2 of module 7 and have a look at configuring a Cisco IOS uh, router to function as a DHCP version 4 server. Okay, that's the main objective of this lesson. Uh, Cisco router running Cisco IOS software can, can be configured as a DHCP version for server. And what uh, the router does is once it's configured as a DHCP version for server, it starts to assign and manage IPv4 addresses uh, from specific, specific or specified address pools within the router to any DHCP version for enabled client. Okay, so here you will see in this packet trace uh, a file. By the way, I've, I've uploaded this file together with this lesson. So as you're watching this video, you can download the file and follow along as, as I demonstrate uh, different uh, aspects of configuring a Cisco IOS DHCP version 4 server. Okay, so here you see R1. We're going to configure R1 as our DHCP version 4 server. And there are two networks, uh, two local area networks you can see. On, on your uh, left hand side, you, you can see 10.0, 1 into 168, 10.0 slash 24. On your right hand side is a separate network that's 192.168.11.0. Uh, so there are two different subnets, the 10.0 subnet and the 11.0 subnet. So we're going to create a pool of addresses specifically for the 10.0 uh, network. Okay, so when you're configuring a DHCP version for server, there are at least three steps, okay, three basic steps that you need to follow to configure a Cisco IOS uh, DHCP version for server. Basically, the first thing you will need to do is uh, uh, be specific about what IP addresses you need to exclude Okay, so excluding IPv4 addresses. Now, if you look at our network here, there are several addresses I want to exclude. Since we're trying to create a pool on this side, a pool addresses, pool of addresses specifically for this LAN, we want to exclude the IP address that's on this uh, gateway, the default gateway address. And maybe, let's say, we want to uh, exclude 10.1 up to 10.10, let's say, for example. Okay, so in this lesson, uh, we want to exclude 192.168.10.1 up to, let's say, 10. Okay, 10.10. 10 .10. Okay, so we want to exclude these addresses. Okay, uh, why do we have to exclude them? Now, when we are excluding these addresses, when we define the pool, when we define the pool, the DHCP server is not going to use any of those addresses we specify that are excluded. Okay, so a single address or a range of address addresses can be excluded, basically by specifying which address you can start from. You see, IP DHCP excluded address, low address, and the high address. So here our lowest address will be 10.1, our highest address will be 10.10. .10. What that means is that the DHCP server is not going to list out 10.1 all the way up to 10.10. .10. After that, 10.11, 12, 13, 14, up to the last address, it will start to list out. Okay, so let's go ahead to R1 and then we're going to configure our DHCP version 4 server. Uh, by the way, uh, do you note that uh, for this network, uh, we haven't configured uh, two uh, interfaces, the one pointing to switch 1 and the one pointing to switch 2. Okay, so let's use 10.1 and 11.1 for the two different networks as the default gateway. So the first thing I'd like to do here is uh, just set the host name to R1. Okay. 
Uh, we leave out all the other basic config uh, settings just for the purpose of this video. If you want, you can go ahead and configure all the other basic uh, configurations that are required. Uh, just go straight to int g000 ip add and I'll give the address 192.168.10.1 subnet mask is slash 24 so 255.255.255.0 make sure to turn the interface on no shut I'll just put in a description uh, link to link to s1 okay okay exit and I'll configure the interface on the right hand side okay so int g001 yep ip address 192.168.11.1 uh, slash 24 subnet mask uh, make sure to do a no shot turn the interface on and that's basically it okay so do a copy run start or wr to write the running config to memory and let's just make sure that the uh, configurations are okay we can see green green that's fine okay so let's go ahead and follow step one to configure uh, yes start the configuration process for the dhcp version for server and by doing step one which is to exclude exclude addresses so notice we begin by using ipdhcp okay you begin off ipdhcp and then just put a question mark okay so you can see the first parameter required is exclude excluded address okay so we want our low address to be 192.168.10.1 we don't want to use that address we don't want to use 10.2, 10.3, all the way up to, oops, 192.168.10.10. Okay, so those are the parameters I want to specify. The low address, okay, low address is 10.1, and the high address is 10.10. .10. So notice it's a range of addresses. Okay, so you can exclude a range of addresses. You can even exclude a single address. Okay, so let's go ahead and hit enter. Uh, we'll try that again and let's exclude. Oops, let's exclude uh, a single address 192.168.10. Let's use the last address 254. You see, you can exclude a single address as well as a range of addresses. Now, typically, when, you, when you're excluding addresses, this the reason why you have to do that is these ex excluded addresses are normally addresses that you assign to routers, servers, printers that, uh, that and other devices that have been or you planning to manually configure those addresses on. Okay, that's where you start excluding addresses. Okay, so that's the reason why you exclude address. So what's the next step? Now we have to define a DHCP version 4 pool name. Okay, so we have to create a pool name. So we'll call this our uh, LAN1. Okay, so let's go ahead. We'll call this the LAN1. So I'm going to go ahead and type IP DHCP. Uh, just put a question mark again. Notice the second parameter we will use here is pool. Okay, so we type in pool. If I leave a space and put question mark, it's asking me to type the pool name. Okay, so I'll, I'll use uh, pool LAN pool 1. Okay, so that's the LAN 1 pool uh, of addresses. So that's the name. Okay, hit enter. The next thing we will need to do is specify the pool of addresses now. That's step number 3. Okay, so I put a question mark in there to show you the different parameters we can be able to configure uh, at this state at this stage of uh, configurations and notice the the prompt also changes to dhcp dash config okay so now we can specify a default router here we can specify a dns server uh, there are several things we can specify here 
So we will go ahead and configure the DHCP pool, but we'll also address a few other parameters as well. The address pool default gateway, we'll need to configure that. So we'll have to use the network statement here to define the range of available addresses. And, we, and then we're going to use a default router command to the default router, the first one, uh, to define the default gateway router. Okay, so you can see uh, from this point here, when we are setting this uh, R1 as a DHCP version for server, the pool is specific for this LAN. So we want to tell this router, for this LAN, that's the name of the pool, we're going to specify a pool of addresses using network. We're going to specify which device or which server it has to look to for DNS and name resolutions. And we'll have to also specify which router is going to be the default router. Okay, Which router is going to be the default router. Basically, that's defining the default gateway. So in this case, it will be the interface G000 IP address. Okay, so the first things first we need to do here is uh, specify a pool of addresses. Now, when we are specifying a pool of addresses, notice we've excluded 10.1 up to 10.10 uh, 10 already. Okay, now when we, when we specify the pool of addresses, we've created a pool name. We just want to say here that it's going to come from this network, 192.168.10.0. Okay, that's the network. Okay, so notice when we're using the network command, we specify the network uh, number or the network ID as well as the subnet mask, 255.255.255.0. Okay, hit enter. Okay, so I've just created a network that this pool is going to list IP addresses from. However, it will exclude this range of addresses, including this single address. Okay. I hope you get that. Okay, so that's configuring the DHCP pool. Now, there are other information that we need to also add in so that the router is going to not only just list out an IP address, it will also list out other network config uh, options including the default gateway information. So let's put in default router. Default router, and default router will be 192.168.10.1. Hit enter. Uh, we need to specify a DNS server as well. Now, we will. I'll show you why we need the DNS server, 192.168. DNS server, we're going to use 11.6. Why 11.6? That's our DNS server. That is going to be our DNS server. And we're going to assign this address, 11.6. That's the reason why we're telling uh, R1 as a DHCP server to give this information to clients requesting for IP addresses. So not just an IP address, it will give the default gateway info. It will also give the DNS server information. Okay, the next thing we need to include here is also uh, a domain name. Now, why do we need a domain name? Basically, that domain name is going to be used within that that uh, particular network here. Okay, so we go domain, uh, hold on, domain name. Okay, just call that uh, corona.com. Uh, okay. Okay. Domain name, corona.com. We are in the Corona well now, so let's use Corona.com. And uh, I think that's about it we can do here. We'll, we'll leave out the other options. Let's end this. Uh, do a WR to save the configurations. Okay, so I'll close that. And that's basically done on part one, configuring DHCP server. So notice it's pretty much straightforward. If I go to PC1, and I click on, oh, I just go static. It was on DHCP already. Go DHCP, it starts requesting. And there you are. Notice when it receives an IP address, that IP address cannot be within the excluded range. Can you see that? It's 10.11. 
it will go 10.12, 10.13, 10.14, up until 10.253. In addition to the IP address and subnet mask, notice default gateway information is added. DNS server information is also added. Okay, so that's that's good. That's one way of verifying that DHCP version 4 server has been configured. Uh, let me just remove this information here. Okay. So the next thing we need to do now is to verify. Okay, so we can either verify from the client's end by going to IP config and setting it to DHCP to, to verify whether it will receive an IP address. If it fails, then something is wrong with the configuration. Let's let's try verify from the router. So there are a number of uh, configs that we can, uh, commands rather, that we can use here if we are verifying uh, uh, the configurations of uh, DHCP. Okay, so let's use, uh, well, let's do a show run. Now, show run is going to show us a lot of information. So let's use the pipe uh, parameter. And we only want to filter out the sections on DHCP. So if we hit enter there, notice uh, we've configured DHCP already. So this verification, uh, this command displays uh, the DHCP v4 commands configured on the router. So notice what we've used here. Okay, this is what we've done. First step, second step, we created a pool, and then we started uh, configuring the various options of uh, DHCP. Okay, so show run pipe section DHCP. Uh, DHCP shows us the commands that were configured on the router. Uh, what about the uh, IP addresses that were leased out? How do we tell from the router itself? So do I show IP DHCP? Just uh, put a question mark in there. Let's see the list of addresses, uh, parameters that we can use. Okay, let's try binding. See binding that shows us the address bindings. Okay, hold on, not bindings, binding. Okay, so notice it has given out an IP address. And that's the IP address. That's the binding. Do you notice something here? It maps a layer 3 address to a layer 2 address. You see, layer 2, layer 3 to layer 2 mapping. See, that's what DHCP does. It maps the IP address to the MAC address. See, it maps the IP address to the MAC address. Okay, so let's let's try the next one. There's another command I put down here. Show IP DHCP server statistics. As the name implies, it's supposed to display count information uh, regarding the number of DHCP messages that have been sent. Uh, let's put a question mark there. Uh, you can't see anything on uh, uh, server. Okay, so I don't think that's going to work. Uh, let's let's just try and confirm that. Yep, uh, it does not pick up uh, server, nor does it uh, recognize statistics uh, because it's not listed anywhere here. Okay, so let's leave that part out. Let's leave that command out. Uh, Packet Tracer has some limitations, so this could be one of them in terms of DHCP. Okay, so we've just configured DHCP server. We've excluded addresses, a range of addresses. We've excluded a single address. We've created a pool name. We've configured uh, an, a subnet from which the pool can uh, lease out IP addresses from. We've added the default router information, the DNS server information, including the domain name as well. But notice I didn't put in lease. I didn't put in lease. L let's just go and check this out. Uh, I, we missed that part. So conf t IP DHCP. Uh, go pool and LAN pool 1. Okay, that's the pool we created earlier on. Uh, I'll just put a question mark. Uh, is there anything on lease here? Okay, so there's no lease option here. Uh, there's no there where we can negate uh, a command or set it to its uh, defaults. We'll use that later when we disable the when we disable the DHCP service. Let's try and use 
IP DHCP let's go option oh it's not recognizing option hold on hold on I should not be typing that just type option only option DHCP option code or no we not we don't need that here okay so let's let's go out of this let's try to uh, okay there's no list information we can be able to configure here uh, we are not able to configure list uh, in the iOS here okay so we can leave that out but uh, basically what the list does I, I think you have you, you should know by now that uh, it, it gives a time frame on which the address can be used up to the end of the time frame then it will either renew or reassign that same IP address back to the same client again so that's the purpose of that command but we'll just leave that out let's um, go to step number three and try to disable the iOS DHCP version for server here now why do we need to disable that now there are some uh, security issues uh, uh, that come with configuring a router as a DHCP version 4 server remember that for every application we open uh, there's a possibility of you expanding the the vulnerability surface of a of a device so if we are not using the service the DHCP version for service there's no point in it being active so we need to disable it okay so uh, here's what you do you use the no service DHCP to disable that okay so if you use a no service DHCP it disables the iOS DHCP v4 server to re-enable it service DHCP okay we, we won't disable it yet I want to give you a scenario and that will bring me to point number four on DHCP version 4 relay the purpose of the relay uh, command IP DHCP relay and why why it needs to be used now think about it this way in in a in in a small a small office home office network a soho environment you really don't need a a fully fledged standalone dns server okay uh, sorry dhcp server you can use your existing uh, router as a dhcp server now when you go to large complex hierarchical networks you know enterprise networks these enterprise servers will be usually located uh, centrally at the core of the network and these servers may provide uh, DHCP DNS as is in this case we will uh, check out the purpose of DNS here we'll try verify it uh, they might uh, provide TFTP FTP or other services email services for the network and network clients like PC1 and PC2 this this uh, devices try to attempt okay to connect to a DHCP server and they are not normally on the same uh, subnet as those servers you see for example PC1 is not on the same subnet as uh, DNS server you see in cases where you have complex hierarchical networks where clients can be in, in many different subnets apart from the servers they will have to send out remember the DHCP requests normally go out as broadcast messages and by now we should know that routers do not forward broadcast messages which means that if PC1 were to communicate with DNS server here or if, if this was a DHCP uh, server and then we had PC1 here on this end trying to communicate with the DNS server it will send out a DHCP uh, request but as soon as the request broadcast message the request is a broadcast message reaches R1 R1 will just simply drop it it will not forward it on because it does not forward broadcast messages so that's where we have DHCP relay playing a very important role so this this command is very important DHCP uh, IP DHCP relay I'll, I'll show you why DHCP relay is important and then we look at the IP helper address let's close off 
DHCP service pass. Let's disable it. So we we'll use a no service DHCP. So we go no service DHCP. Okay, so we've just disabled that. Okay, to verify, go to PC1, place it on static, DHCP again. It starts requesting IP address. It starts requesting IP address. Failed. Okay. Now notice we have disabled DHCP services on R1. Let's go to the DNS server. Click on that. Go to services and go to DHCP. So we'll use version 4. Okay. It's off at the moment. Okay. It's off at the moment. Let's turn that on. Okay. Let's turn this service on. And we already have an existing pool of addresses. Uh, no default gateway information, no DNS server info, But starting IP address is 11.0. Okay, 11.0. Let's keep that 11.0. Okay, let's turn the service on. And we close that. Okay, if I go back here and I click here, notice it's never going to receive anything because it will be sending out a DHCP request but it's, as soon as the request hits R1, it's dropped. Let's check PC2. Let's remove it from static and go to DHCP. Yep, see, it picked up an IP address. Again, notice, notice why that happened, because PC2 is in the same subnet as the DNS server. When you look at PC1, PC1 is on a different subnet. So this is where we now need to use this command, IPDHCP relay. Okay, let's go to R1. Let's use IPDHCP, leave a space, question mark. Can you see? Relay is there. Okay, so put relay, put a question mark again, uh, relay information. Let's just hit enter, incomplete. So we have to put in IPDHCP relay information okay tenta still incomplete leave a space put question mark okay it's asking for trust all okay so trust all dhcp uh, request okay hit enter there so ip dhcp relay information trust all okay so ip dhcp relay is the basic command but you can add this all so that uh, receive dhcp packets will contain the necessary information that's required. Okay, so now we've done the relay there. Let's go back to PC1, uh, IP config, to a static, DHCP again. Let's, let's wait and see what happens. Whether it picks up, okay, it failed again. It failed again. Okay, so notice there's still something wrong here. Although we used IP DHCP relay, we, we can still see that uh, uh, PC1 is not able to forward, okay? It's looking for a DHCP v4 server when we set it to DHCP. It's sending out DHCP request, but R1 is not forwarding broadcast between the network. Okay, so either, either the DNS, uh, the DHCP server has to be located in the same subnet or we need to configure a relay now you've just noticed that we've created a relay here but unfortunately it didn't send out that information back okay it didn't send that information back if we go try it a second time again static dhcp okay so it's sending out a request dhcp request again the dhcp failed dhcp failed and it hasn't given an IP address, uh, it sent forwarded that information. So now let's try use IP helper address. Okay, let's try use the IP helper address. Now why do we have to use the IP helper address? When R1 has been configured, okay, as a DHCP uh, version for relay agent, that's what we've just done, it will accept uh, broadcast request for DHCP version for services okay, from clients within that subnet and then forward those requests as unicast to 
the IPv4 address of the DNS server. But in this case, we haven't told R1 who is the who is the DHCP server in this case. That's where the second command comes in now. IP helper address. Okay, so let's go to R1. Let's use IP helper address. Leave a space question mark. Oh, IP helper. Let's just put IP question mark. Okay, let's check the different uh, commands available. Okay, we don't have an IP. We don't have an IP helper address. Okay, notice that. We don't have an IP helper address. Okay, this should cause R1 to relay the DHCP version for broadcast to the server. But notice we are not able to find it here. Now, why we are not able to find it here is if we go back to our network, uh, we are receiving requests from here, okay, from this interface. But that, those requests need to be forwarded out of which interface? This interface. So let's try go to that interface. Okay. So we go int g001. And let's just put a put IP question mark. And there we are. Okay. Helper address. Okay. So these are all UDP broadcast that need to be forwarded. So IP helper address and we need to point to this server okay so what we're telling the router is this anytime you receive uh, any udp broadcast messages okay the hcp broadcast a part of udp when you receive them you're going to forward them to the server now just take note uh, put this in here so that you can see see the IP helper address command not only forwards just uh, DHCP only, it also forwards other UDP services as well. You see time, uh, TACAX as well, DNS, TFTP, this is for security, for authentication, uh, NetBIOS name service, NetBIOS datagram service, TFTP and so on. Okay, so DNS is what we are looking at. Uh, D sorry, DHCP is what we are looking at. So IP helper address, we just need to point to the address of the server. So 192.168.11.6. Hit enter. And let's close that. Let's go to PC1. IP helper. I'll set it to static again. And let's go DHCP. Fingers crossed this should work. Oh, it failed again. It failed again. Okay, it failed again. Okay, something is wrong here. Did you notice um, if I go back here, did I use the right interface? Shouldn't it be this interface? Int G000, okay? Because we are receiving the broadcast from this end, not from that end, from this end. Okay, so IP helper, oops, IP helper address 192.168.11.6. Enter. Okay, go back to PC1, and go static, set it to DHCP again. Again, fingers crossed, it's requesting, it's doing the DORA process, failed. Okay, set it to static. Try again. Okay, it failed again. Okay, so I'll go to R1. Let me go to exit. Int G001. No IP helper. No IP helper address. Let, let's just... Oops, no IP... Helper address 192, 192 .168 .11 .6. Let's just finish it off from 
I mean, close the helper from that interface. Allow it only on this interface. Let's try this again. Uh, don't worry, this is going to work. Okay, let's ask it to request again. Dora process, and it fails again. Uh, let me go back to the DNS server desktop IP config. Okay, default gateway is 11.1. .1, correct. Yep, all good on the server side. Uh, let's check here. Yes, it has received 11.2. okay i see i see i see why it's not picking up an address uh, let's try that again okay uh, the address pool of addresses the pool of addresses the pool of addresses uh, let's let's try a different pool server pool server pool 2 okay and the default gateway i'll leave the server pool as it is but the default gateway should be 192.168.11.1 dns server should be 192.168.11.6 okay so we save that Okay, it's on. Close that. Let's go and ask request. Okay, one other reason why this could uh, this could not be working is because it's it's on a separate subnet. Okay, we already have the 11.0 here. So if I click here, if I go back, notice it didn't assign a default gateway. If I go static and I request again, it will put in the default gateway information because I just did that on the DNS server here, so that that's understandable. Let's put in a let's let's put in a subnet. That's uh, put in the appropriate subnet. So let's create pool number two, and we say 10.1 is the default gateway. DNS server will remain as 11.6, and it will start IP address will be 10.0. Yep, and let's leave everything else as it is. Okay, add that. Okay, let's see how this works out. We set it. Oh, yeah, it picked up. Okay. Okay, so we just realized notice um, we have two separate subnets. Okay, see, we had the 192.168. Uh, 10 oops 10.0 subnet okay and then we had the 11.0 subnet okay so when we specify two separate pools now we are able to have DHCP services being IP addresses being listed out to its appropriate uh, uh, networks or subnets okay so that's that's basically the purpose of uh, DHCP version for relay commands. Okay, so we have the IP DHCP relay. We also have the IP helper address. So that ex, uh, that that should uh, help you understand the purpose of uh, why you have to configure an iOS uh, as a DHCP version for server. Uh, there there are situations where you need to do that. Okay, you need to do that. Not all the time you will have to uh, configure. A, router as a DHCP version for server, uh, especially in a, in a large uh, complex hierarchical network, uh, large enterprise network, uh, you might have uh, dedicated uh, DHCP servers. But in this case, we can use the uh, DHCP, uh, you, we can use a router as a DHCP version for uh, server by, by configuring the iOS. Okay, let me just uh, summarize this by uh, testing the DNS services. So I go to DNS, uh, I go to the DNS server, click on services, DNS, uh, just make sure DNS is on. We'll just do this for the last, uh, for final check, verification, and then we can uh, save that. 
I'll create a website uh, as an A record www.corona.com and my web server is this same machine so it's going to be 192.168.11.6 I'll add that so DNS service is on HTTP service must be on I'll go to PC1 and I'll click on the web browser okay the web browser is here I'll click on the web browser www corona.com and there you are okay so that verifies that when http traffic is coming from here to here because dns information is already uh, configured inside uh, through dhcp it has given that information uh, dns 11.6 when i type in in the browser when i type in www.corona.com what happens is that the the mapping okay the mapping of the ip address to the name is done by the dns server so dns domain name services does the resolution okay it resolves uh, ip addresses instead of typing in here 192.168.11.6 i just type the name okay so that is the job of the dns server to resolve the name to the ip address Okay, so welcome to coronavirus well. Stay safe. Always wash your hands with soap and water. Keep a distance of a meter or more.